The biggest surprise for me at AMD's Big Navi reveal event on the 28th was smart access memory. And I don't think I was alone in that. I was in the weeks leading up to that event making my daily YouTube videos about Big Navi leaks. I was on all of the websites I could find that were leaking information about the Big Navi launch, and I hadn't seen anything about it. So at that reveal event, I was a little confused about exactly what it was, how it worked, and should I care? In this video, I intend to answer some of those questions. Specifically, what is it? Meaning, what does it do? And who can use it? Meaning, what are the hardware requirements? In what systems will it work? And in what systems will it not work? And I also wanna talk about, should we care? Meaning, is this a game changer? Or is this a meaningless gimmick? And then at the end, I actually wanna give my thoughts on where do I think is we're going in the future with all of this? Um, responses from NVIDIA or Intel? Are those a possibility? Let's take a look. Okay, so before I get into explaining the details and how this works, I do wanna preface this by saying, I'm a high school math teacher. I'm a tech enthusiast, but I am not like a graphics engineer or a CPU engineer. So I'm basing what I'm gonna tell you off of the research that I've been able to do and off of what AMD has given on their website. So if I make any mistakes, please correct me in the comment section. That was actually extremely useful to me in my video yesterday where I made a mistake about whether Time Spy was a ray tracing benchmark or not, which was kind of a big deal. So thank you uh, for the few of you who uh, instantly corrected me and I was able to update the title and description uh, and pin that comment uh, for that error. And I apologize that I made that error in the first place. So always let me know if you feel like anything I'm saying is a mistake, and thank you so much for doing that. I try my best to give you accurate information here. Also, I wanna thank everybody who's watched that video uh, and hit the like or subscribe button. I'm blown away. I've been doing this YouTube thing for less than a month, and that video, last time I checked, was closing in on 13,000 views. I'm utterly, <laughs> I wasn't expecting anybody to watch my stuff in the first month. This has been a very unexpected but welcome surprise, so thank you. So let's talk about what is smart access memory. So as AMD explains it, they are claiming that in a traditional structure between how a CPU interacts with a GPU, specifically with the GPU's uh, VRAM, the, the video memory, it normally can only access that memory in 256 megabyte blocks. And what shared access memory does is remove that bottleneck. So let me put it this way. In AMD's new 6000 series cards, the 6800 and above that have been officially announced, they have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And so there's 256 megabytes in the traditional structure in the way that a CPU can access that. So four uh, 256 megabyte chunks fit inside of a gigabyte. So we could do 16 times four, hey, I'm a math teacher, and we get uh, 64 uh, sectors of these uh, 256 megabyte chunks inside of this 16 gigabytes of virtual memory, so, I'm uh, sorry, video memory. So as I understand it, they're saying that a normal CPU is gonna have to address that in 64 different chunks. And if it needs to update something in one chunk, it can't update at the same time as updating it in, in another chunk. And because of that, it slows things down in certain situations, not in every situation or every game or anything like that. But it's a bottleneck that can be removed when it's occurring by AMD. Now, how are they able to do that? Well, AMD is leveraging the fact that they have a huge advantage over NVIDIA when it comes to being a CPU manufacturer as well as a GPU manufacturer. So AMD has their Ryzen processors and they have their Radeon graphics cards, whereas NVIDIA isn't producing a desktop uh, 
CPU processor, right? They are looking at buying ARM, which is something I'll talk about later, but that's not direct competitor, at least right now. So this is a unique thing that AMD can do because they're manufacturing both the CPU and the GPU so they can allow this to happen and they're leveraging that fact. So that's my explanation of basically what it is. I'm sure there's more details there that you could go into, but for the purposes of this video and my understanding of the technology, I'm gonna leave it at that. Let's talk about who can use it, or in other words, what hardware is required? Because I've seen in my comment sections on videos that where uh, the smart access memory has come up, this has been a confusing point for some people. Does it work on any 500 series AMD motherboard, or does it have to be the higher end version? And does it work on the earlier ones, like the 400 series? Well, I, I just checked AMD's website to try to clarify this, and it seems to be stated clear as day that this requires a 500 series motherboard. It doesn't say it has to be 570. It also states clearly that it requires a Ryzen 5000 series processor. So no, this will not work with an earlier Ryzen. And it states that it needs a Radeon 6000 series graphics card. So if you're sitting there with a uh, 5700 XT or something like that, and wondering, is this something that you'll be able to use? The answer is no at least right now, based on the information on AMD's website. So let's make sure we all fully understand this. So if you currently have a 500 series motherboard, but there's no way that you have a 5000 series processor right now, unless you have an engineering sample, because at the time of recording here, those haven't released yet, then you need to get a new CPU in order for this to function. But if you have the 500 series motherboard, you can upgrade your CPU and you'll have to get a 6000 series GPU, which again, also haven't launched yet. Um, so you will need to get uh, both of those things. But if you have the 500 series motherboard, you can upgrade your CPU and your GPU, and you will be able to have access to this. But if you're currently on a 400 series motherboard, even if you update to a Ryzen 5000 CPU and a Radeon 6000 series graphics card, you are not going to be able to use smart access memory, at least according to what's currently available from AMD. Also again, if you have a 500 series motherboard and you upgrade to a 5000 series Ryzen processor, the Zen 3 processors, uh, but you're sitting on your uh, 5700 XT Radeon graphics card, that one's not gonna do it. You have to upgrade to the 6000 series. So this is very restrictive on what situation it will work for. Now we're gonna take a look at, do we care? Is this a game changer or is this a gimmick? At the launch event, I was a little bit confused because the graph that they showed seemed to be indicating uh, that, it could have a large effect in some games, but not others. And it was also complicated by the fact that it said that those graphs included rage mode as well as smart access memory. And in my initial uh, reaction to the live reveal event, I was actually even confused on what the difference between rage mode and smart access memory was. So I'm not gonna do a separate video on rage mode unless I find something interesting on it, but let me clear this up right now. Rage mode is not the same thing as smart access memory, and they do not need to be turned on together. They are separate, unrelated features, but that graph that they showed at the launch event had them both turned on, which I think led to some confusion. I've seen comments on my videos where I'm showing graphs of performance numbers with smart access memory turned on, and people seem to think it's also using rage mode. And those two things do not have to be on at the same time. They are distinct features. What the rage mode is, is apparently a switch you can turn on that ups the power limit for the graphics cards and will allow them to clock higher. So you could think of it as a one-click small overclock by increasing the power limit. That's what rage mode is. And from what we've seen in statements from AMD since the launch event, it seems like that's only gonna count for a one to 2% performance gain, which is something, and it's cool if you can just hit a button and get some free performance, although, it might not be free in terms of thermals or the fan speed noise, those sorts of things. Um, but if you can click a button, get a little better performance, cool, even if it's just one or 2%. But rage mode and smart access memory 
are not the same thing and they can function independently. Do we have any information on what the performance benefits are for just smart access memory separate from rage mode? Well, on AMD's website, I did find some information. They do say that it can be up to an 11% gain in current games. And remember, up to is the way a marketing thing that you need to pay attention to. Up to does not mean you will get an 11% gain in every single game. It means that a best case scenario, a game where this has the most possible effect you could ever expect to see it have right now, you get 11%. But there could very well be other games where it literally does nothing. You get a 0% gain. It doesn't hurt you, but it doesn't help you. And I, th I think that really just depends on whether or not that game suffers from any bottleneck due to the access of the memory in those 256 megabyte blocks, like we discussed when we described what this actually does. So the amount the game gets bottlenecked by that affects how much performance gain you will get from turning this feature on. Also, all the current games that those were tested on, as far as I'm aware, were never designed with this feature in mind. So I am curious if we'll see games in the future designed with this in mind that will see a larger performance gain from it. But that's speculation. We don't actually know if that will ever be the case. So currently what we do know, at least from AMD, and I don't think they just flat out lie about this, is we can see up to 11% gain, for example, in games like Forza Horizon 4. But in other games, we'll probably see zero benefit whatsoever. Okay, so should we care about that at all? Well, as you saw in my video from a couple of days ago, if you watched it, uh, where I said that um, AMD destroys the 3090, those were benchmarks that took smart access memory into account. They turned it on and they stacked up their 6800, their 6800 XT and their 6900 XT up against NVIDIA's 2080 Ti and their 3080 and 3090. And remember the 2080 Ti has very similar performance to a 3070, so that's really the stand-in for a 3070. And we saw some very interesting results in certain games. So remember the 11% number, that's our best case scenario, and that seems to be the, uh, the Forza Horizon 4. And in that game, at 1440p, we see the 6800, not just the 6800 XT and not just the 6900 XT, but we see the 6800, the $579 graphics card, the most cut down of the big navvies, beating the 3090 in Forza Horizon 4 at ultra settings at 1440p. Now, again, that's a absolute best case scenario, but it's really impressive. So, is this a game changer or is it a gimmick? I think it's somewhere in between. I think it is going to be a very nice to have feature, but, you know, it's not gonna do anything in some games and 11%, if that's the best we can see from it, that's awesome. It's, it's a free performance boost as long as you already have the other parts. Which brings me to another point. Um, what is AMD's strategy here? Well, I think that this is absolutely brilliant because if you're somebody who's looking to uh, build a new computer right now, completely from scratch, you want to buy everything, new motherboard, new CPU, new GPU. There is very little reason, in my opinion, to buy anything other than a 500 series motherboard to support a Ryzen 5000 series Zen 3 CPU and a Radeon 6000 series graphics card because their CPUs you'd probably be buying anyway right now because AMD, to put it frankly, is just absolutely destroying Intel at everything. They're finally beating them in single thread performance and gaming performance where Intel used to be holding on to the advantage, even though they were down on thread counts, which mattered more for productivity and creative tasks. Well, if you're gonna be buying a 5000 series Ryzen processor and pairing it up with one of those motherboards, why would you not take advantage of this 
free performance gain from what's looking like a really, really solid 6000 series graphics card. Now I will say that we have not seen independent benchmarks from the Radeon 6000 series graphics card. So I understand that I am a bit on this hype train, okay? I've been an NVIDIA user for years, but Big Navi is really getting me hyped up. I'm very impressed with what AMD has been doing lately. And yeah, I'm very impressed. But the point is, if you're building a new computer right now, I mean, sure, probably wait for independent reviews and for supplies to be available anyway, but hard to argue against buying that setup. And if you do, smart access memory, maybe it's not a massive game changer, but it's an added benefit. And I'm gonna move along now to a little bit more speculation about other thoughts on this topic as well as, as, well as what we might see in the future. In the past, on like PC building discussion boards like on Reddit or forums and things like that, a new builder question would pop up a lot, which is, wait, if I'm getting an AMD CPU, do I have to get an AMD GPU or vice versa? Sometimes people weren't sure if you had to because of compatibility issues, or some people weren't sure if there would be some kind of a performance gain by doing that. Well, the answer used to always be, no, it doesn't matter. There's no advantage to pairing those up. Well, that's changed now. This has fundamentally changed a minor aspect, at least, of PC building. And on another note, speaking of needing independent reviews of things like the new 6000 series graphics cards and smart access memory itself, this is gonna really complicate the review process because now we're getting this other feature that only works on certain hardware setups that we're gonna have to see. And I don't know if this factored at all into AMD's planning, but isn't this gonna force all of the major reviews to be done, at least some subset of the reviews that they do, to be done on AMD CPUs? Not that they might not have done it anyway, considering how well performing they are, but any reviewer who publishes reviews of the graphics cards only on an Intel platform is gonna get the question, but yeah, what about smart access memory? Did you test it on Ryzen? So, that could be free marketing every single time a GPU review comes out. They might get their CPUs boosted in just free marketing getting thrown out there as well. So once again, AMD capitalizing on stuff. I wanna keep this short because this is speculation. Could we see Nvidia try to compete with this? And my short answer is not right now, but maybe. In the future, could ARM processors actually be in desktop CPU, uh, C CPUs? Could they be actual gaming processors on desktops? And I don't think so right now, um, but Apple is switching entirely over to ARM and Apple can sometimes be a trendsetter. Could we see like the death of x86 CPUs? I don't think we're going to, at least not anytime soon. I mean, no, no technology lasts forever. But uh, it's a question. And with NVIDIA trying to buy up ARM, I can't remember if that deal has gone through yet with regulators and all that, but I don't know. Could that be a thing down the road? Maybe, but that would be a long ways down the road before we see that switch over happen. And then the other question mark is how about Intel? I don't think we'd see Intel pair up with NVIDIA to offer this kind of a integration between them. But Intel has been making noise about getting into the GPU market and their new, is it XE or do you pronounce it Xi Z? I don't even know. But the point is, regardless of how it's pronounced, Intel is starting to produce discrete graphics cards. At this point, just at the laptop level. But could we see that scale up? That's still a question mark right now. And I, I might try to do some research on that and follow it up with it in future videos. Uh, but the point is, could we see maybe, I'm talking 10 years from now, uh, a situation where we actually see like Intel, AMD, and Nvidia all offering both CPUs and GPUs that are featuring things like smart access memory, things to pair them up and convince people to lock into that ecosystem, which in some ways could be really cool if it offers these extra features. But I'm also, a little bit wary of anything that locks you into a particular ecosystem. For example, just to throw something out there, NVIDIA G-Sync monitors. So a lot of people commenting on my videos about Big Navi lately have said like, I'd love to go Team Red this time around, but I have a G-Sync monitor that's not gonna get be FreeSync compatible if I switch. And so they're kind of tied to the NVIDIA platform. And I don't really like that. 
Anyway, this video is going on way too long. If you've made it to the end here, you should probably think about hitting the like or subscribe button on my channel. I do PC and technology related content. And uh, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts about all of this in the comments section. Thank you and have an excellent day.